Jesus Christ. Wow, okay. Um, I don't know how so much can drastically change in a week, but we've pulled it off. And that means something, at least. We've pulled off potentially one of the most incredible um, dis destructions of a, of a squad <laughs> in only a week, maybe in football history. Uh, now, I would caveat this immediately by saying that the window is not shut and there is another week left for the outgoings and so on to hopefully be resolved. However, as we stand today, as where we was this time last week, we're a 5-0 winner home to Wigan. That, by the way, wasn't a great performance, but many players that we expected to be out, some did, but all at once. And then some, and then it kept going, and then it kept going. And here we are today. So... On paper, the result doesn't look like it's that bad. You know, Sunderland, you know, they're on a bit of form and, you know, going to Sunderland is always inferior, always a tough place, especially for us historically. Uh, you know, our win there last time was our first time and I want, I want to say, you know, a good couple of decades, a, a, a long time. So one, though, on paper doesn't really come across like it's that disastrous, but in terms of the performance, wow, wow. I don't think we had a single shot on target from my memory. Um, and everything just felt so all over the place. The, the best way to, to really explain it is it, it looked like a team that has had half the squad removed in the last week. It looks like a team that's been completely ripped apart in a week. There's no cohesion. There's no sort of idea of where players should be. I don't know where any players are really meant to be. I have no idea. And it looks like they don't, they don't know either. There doesn't seem to be any plan in terms of how to actually get the ball uh, into wide areas or actually have some consistent passages of play. Like from what I saw, it was either two things, either hoof it up to Lyle Foster and hopefully he holds up the ball, which never really worked, or kind of end up passing the, passing the ball to kind of Roberts and he just eventually loses it, usually with a ball kind of, outside to the wide areas and then of course it's always a poor pass because I mean I, I've wrote I've wrote some things down on the notepad here to kind of just remind me of what I just witnessed and what I was thinking while watching the game but like what on earth is going on there honest to god so let the first thing I put down here was the fact that it looks like a team that looks like it's been ripped apart within a week that no one knows what's going on. You look at the bench, there's two keepers on the bench and there's three academy players. Welcome back, Sean Dyche, you know? I mean, all you need is, to, all you need is a, just whack Kevin Long on the bench there, probably Vidra, and it looks like we're back in 2022 or, 20, or 2020. Difference is we're still winning games in Premier League. Um, I don't really think any players knew where they were meant to be in the pitch. Um, Jay Rodriguez, I think, is the prime example. I have no idea what the hell he was meant to be. I have no idea. Um, he, he, for me, he looked like a centre mid. You know, I, I don't think he was a number 10 or anything of that sort. He looked like a centre midfielder, which is baffling to me. Um, Masengo, I don't think I knew where he was meant to be. Um, I mean, we can talk about the, the wide players. I think that's important. We've gone from having almost too many wide players that we can't even count them all. So now suddenly now playing a striker, a target man at that, a target man striker, who has got a bit of pace in that, but he's not a winger. He's a striker. We're playing him as a left winger because we've sold Zeruri. Kolyosha's not available. I, I presume it's because of injury, but I guess you never know at this stage. You know, Berg was gone because of injury. Suddenly, apparently, he's now fine to train immediately at Fulham. Convenient. And then on the right-hand side, we're still playing Fatina, which I don't think is a winger. You know, like, he's got energy, he's got some... He's, he's dynamic, he, he presses, you know, he works hard, but he's not a winger. He's a wing-back, but he's not a winger. And then we played Sambo to replace him as the right winger. He was definitely not a wing-back, he, he, he's a full-back. So we've now gone from playing and having too many choices of wingers to now playing a target man striker, a wing-back, and a full-back at wing. I don't know where Amdouni was meant to be when he came and I think he just said, just try to be on the pitch and do what you can, really. 
Um, it looked like Foster and Hutonji was kind of swapping round, but it didn't work either way. In fact, like Foster's not a winger either. I think we tried that at some stages last year, and that was also disastrous. Benson, don't know where he is. Of course, Zoroi sold him. Don't know why, we just did. Um, wow. Wow. Uh, what else have I wrote down here? I can't see because I've now, my God, now I've got my goddamn glasses on. So, um, yeah. Um, in terms of who had a poor game, I don't really want to single out one player because I, I, I don't think anyone had a good game here. I think everyone was poor um, because there was just no cohesion in terms of the passes of play. There was no consistent way of how to get the ball up the pitch. There was no, like, you know, with Cullen, you can kind of tell that he wants to get the ball, he wants to get the ball ticket. And to be fair, we saw signs of this in that Wigan game. We saw signs that, like, that our midfield was just completely being overrun. But our clinical edge on the break was what got us over the line. And then some. And um, they did none of that today. I think Utonji had a decent header um, very late on in the first half. Second half, not much really at all. Um, and um, to clarify... I did just witness when Sunderland went down to 10 men and you know, we're chasing the game 1-0 down and we subbed off a striker, a tall one at that, a, a target man striker that we're just going to hoof the ball into the box anyway, which he did and it failed miserably. We took him off the pitch for Luke McNally. So just clarify, we're 1-0 down. The team's now on 10 men now, the, the opponent. So we decided to sub off our striker, who's actually a bit tall, for a centre-back, which hasn't played for the club in two years. Because apparently he played as a striker when he was 16 in the academy. Baffling. Um, you know, CJ Egan Rary starting his first start for the club ever. Um, I mean... You could tell that he's a City Academy boy, decent passing, and that he had a great long ball. I think that created that Hutonji chance at the end of the first half. But like he just he does look a bit lightweight. I can't single him out his first game. Fair enough. You know, but like I think Perez lost the ball a lot. But I can't I don't want to single him because I think they were all poor. I think they were all really poor. And I just I just don't know what J Rod is doing. <laughs> I just don't know where he's meant to be. I don't think anyone knows where they're meant to be. And we've got a week now to really sort out what on earth. Uh, has happened in the last week. About 15 players are either injured or sold or are in the process of being sold. In a world, Trafford and, and Dooney probably shouldn't even, should, should not have even been involved in today's game. You know, O'Shea is likely going off, you know. So, uh, and Cullen, I, I presume that is a, a, a genuine injury. Um, so that's why he's not there. Hopefully resting him for the black for the derby next weekend. Same as Cole Yosho, we can hope because if we're not got Cole Yosho, we're not got Cullen, we're not got O'Shea, we're not got Amdouni, we're not got Trafford on top of all the players that's already gone. Vegos is going, Johan's gone. You know, uh, Jesus Christ, lads, we're gonna need a big, 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 big week, big week. And there are some players that are linked. Hannibal and the the, the lad from Celtic that played at West Brom last year. Forgot his name. There's a few others. There's a few others as well that's been linked. Uh, I think Samiento as well. That could that could be good signing. But like, yeah, let's hope that we can look back on today's game in a in, in a month or so time, thinking Jesus Christ, yeah, that was a really bad game. Thank God we went to the market and sorted that out. Otherwise, we would have been screwed. I really hope today is a massive wake up call to the board. But I can't blame Scott Parker fully because he had a squad last week and now he's not even there anymore. So. You know, two keepers on the bench and three academy boys. We really, really, Sean Dyche, we, we're doing that? Really? Really? So we need to sort this out. So I really hope this could be a massive wake up call. Because maybe winning that game could have been a, you know, it could have been probably a negative if he still won that game. Maybe the board would have thought, okay, actually, you know what? Maybe you don't need to do too much. No, we lost in a disastrous way, in a way that we probably could have lost by three or four. Suddenly we're on it. They were pressing high. They were confident. We weren't any of that. So we need to sort that out. And, and now we've got Blackburn up next. At home. We cannot lose a derby. I'm flying over for that as well. So, yeah. Wake up, Cole, indeed. Enjoy your day, boys. <laughs>